Okay, for this problem, we have an unknown starting material, and you react it with hydroboration, followed by tosylchloride, followed by sodium methoxide, and that gives you that alkene product. I'm trying to figure out what the starting material is. So let's kind of take a look at what our reagents do first. Hydroboration, we know, takes alkenes and becomes alcohols. And it adds HNOH sin addition with the OH going on the less substituted carbon. Tosyl chloride changes alcohols into good leaving groups, OTSs. And sodium methoxide, well, that's a base. And it typically, and it can give E2 reactions. We know it's going to give an E2 reaction because we have a tosylate here, and our product is an alkene that highly suggests an E2. So, the reaction going from here to here, sodium methoxide, it's an E2 reaction. Now, with an E2 reaction, either carbon could be the alpha carbon. So, here or here. Now, when you're doing an E2 reaction and you have the possibility of different diastereomers, which you do, because this has, e, has um, this is isomer right here, is the E isomer, and we want just the E isomer, not the Z isomer. And when you want just one diastereomer, when two are possible, you have to use the anti-coplanar rule. And when your alpha carbon and beta carbon are both chiral centers, then you'll get just one diastereomer. Here, the alpha carbon and beta carbon aren't both chiral centers, and so this would give you both diastereomers. Therefore, this one is out. This one, on the other hand, if we take a look at it, both the alpha carbon and the beta carbon are both chiral centers, meaning you'll get just one diastereomer, not them both. Now we need to set the stereochemistry to make sure we get just that diastereomer. And for that, we use the anticoplanar rule. Now you choose a stereochemistry for the OTS. It could be a wedge, could be a dash, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to choose that OTS to be a wedge. When you choose that OTS group to be a wedge, then the hydrogen that you draw in, I'm going to say down here, has to be a dash. Now, I could have drawn the hydrogen down there. I could have also drawn the hydrogen up here. It doesn't matter. It just has to be a dash. And then the resulting group that's next to it, let's say this methyl group here, has to be a wedge. Or in the uppercase, the ethyl group has to be a wedge. Either one. Instead of going through both of these, I'm just going to take this one and keep moving forward. Or, technically, backwards, I guess. So, tosyl chloride in triethylamine takes alcohols and makes them the tosylates, and it doesn't change that stereochemistry at all. So you would have this. What hydroboration does is it takes an alkene and adds H and an OH across that alkene, and it does so in a syn fashion. And so to figure out exactly what alkene we need, we need to redraw this molecule so the H and the OH are syn to each other. And by doing so, we rotate that OH so it's a line, so that makes this ethyl group a wedge. We rotate this H so it's a line to the top of the page. The ethyl group becomes a wedge to the bottom, and the methyl group becomes a dash to the bottom, like so. We can double check this by checking R and S. One, two, three, that's an S chiral center. One, two, three. That's also an S chiral center. So it checks out. 
Now, it's pretty straightforward to go backwards from here because you just remember that wedges are cis to each other, dashes are cis to each other. So here, we, when we draw our alkene, our two wedges end up cis to each other, so right there and there. And the methyl group, being a dash, ends up trans to the wedge. You get there. So that is the product that we're looking for. And when we look through our options, we find the one that matches that product.